Um, so tell, uh, told me to tell you that the last chance to check out is after this presentation. It's a pleasure to me to introduce Michael Medin, who will talk about distributed monitoring with NS client. It's working? Awesome. I actually, I, I will not. Just want to start off by that. No idea where the title come from. Not mine. I think it's last year's title, actually. Uh, I discovered it yesterday, otherwise I would have told them. Uh, <coughs> I am going to talk a little bit about monitoring <laughs> with NS client FOSBOS. And you can maybe call it distributed a bit if you feel inclined. Uh, but anyway, my name is Michael Medin, as they probably said. I'm from Stockholm, Sweden. And this is my like fifth time or something at conference, so I'm starting to feel like I live here practically. Uh, and I'm, as I said, not here to talk about Windows monitoring and distributed monitoring, so I'm talking about just NS Client++ plus plus, and we'll get more into that later on. Uh, also, I read this book a while back, which was called How to Make Awesome Presentation. It's a good book, you should read it, but unfortunately I don't really have the skills required, but I. I tried to listen to some of it and I tried to ignore a lot of it, but, but essentially they said don't do PowerPoint, so I'm, I'm doing PowerPoint. And they said don't do demos, so I'm going to do demos. Um, but, but I do have this well weird looking font, so you in the back can't read, for instance, that, that was a good thing they told me about. They also said I should put my name on the front cover, I've never had done that before, so, so now it's sort of beaming you all to go to my webpage and check it out. But let's get started and yeah, need to click again here. <coughs> There'll be no disclaimer this year, but it's still your fault, so don't blame me. And the other thing is that my name, Michael Medin, so I'm talking a little bit about myself. And it's important to understand that I'm dev, not ops. So I'm, I'm not you, I'm different. And I ended up in ops a while back. And I, I won't really tell you if I'm the sheep or the wolf, that's for you to decide, but but I am different. Uh, so my angle into this is sort of that I accidentally ended up in ops and been working there ever since. But I build SOA system for a living. Actually, that would have been, oh yeah, sorry. And uh, don't work with Nagio, Sysinga, C++ or anything like that. So don't ask me about it really. And, and if you want to do monitoring, you can do it with NS Client++ with pretty much all of the tools. But I don't really know how the tools work, to be honest. <coughs> So, uh, and this is sort of not working at all. This is like the worst thing ever. I'm gonna blame Logitech. Uh, there'll be no agenda this year either. And instead we're gonna talk a little bit about NS Client++, the program. And the first thing is that it's written in C++ and it's been around for a while. If this pointer thing would have worked. Is there like a reason for it not working? Or well, so I just discovered that since it's probably 2003, it depends a bit on how we count, it might be like a 10 year anniversary next year. So I might bring cake or not, which is probably the more likely option. Uh, it runs on Windows before version 040, now it runs on Linux and Windows. Uh, good or bad, I won't really judge. It's also modular, and this is important to understand because the program itself does nothing. It just loads modules and allows modules to do things. So if you just install it, it will not do anything for you. So you need to configure it and you need to tell it what to do by loading the modules you want. And that's sort of something I like. Uh, other people don't like it because they want to do click it, click it, click it, next, but you can't. Uh, it's also open source, not as a lot of other people say, open core. Uh, so it's, you can, what, what you get is what there is, there is no paid version. Uh, Ofo Zero was out in May, I didn't really add the dates because I usually sort of sneak it out and then a couple of weeks later when people told me there were bugs, I sort of tell people that it's out so it will be slightly bug fixed. Uh, but somewhere in May anyway it was out and the Ofo One version was due out this month, but, but I had some stuff to do last month, so I didn't really have time. But I'm going to release the first release candidate when I get home from this trip. And uh, hopefully a couple of weeks after that we'll have the new version out. Uh, another important thing to notice is that the difference between 0.4.0 and 0.4.1 is essentially bug fixes and new features. 
So everything should be working the same. Uh, 042, which will be out early next year, and I'm lying here, I might admit that it will not be out in February, but that's, that's what it says on the slide, uh, will have changes. So there you might have to do something when you install it or do some sort of conversion on the configuration maybe, or you know, some modules might have changed or anything like that. But the idea is that over zero to over one should be just an up or an, an patch set or an update or something like that. Uh, it's also important to understand that 041 will be the new stable, which means that I will stop supporting 039, essentially. Uh, it will probably be there, but I will not, if you have a problem with 039, I will just tell you to upgrade. So stop bothering me is essentially what I'm saying. <coughs> and, uh, oh, yeah, that, that's what happens when you do last minute changes. Uh, they ended up below the slide. Anyway, I don't know if you read Geek and Poke, it's an awesome, hilarious webcomic, and this is of course in reference to Windows 7, or Windows 8, sorry, where they apparently removed something fundamental, the desktop. Uh, and what I'm saying is it's, it's time to move on, so stop using the 037 or 027 or whatever old version you're using, and move, use 040 or 041 or something like that, because it's painful for me to have to tell people that, yeah, I fixed this a year ago in the newer version, which you're not using. And this clickety thing is the worst ever. Uh, so we have a project as well, and the important thing to understand about the project, if it's working, yes, is it's a one-man band. So that means it's, it's me playing the guitar, singing, driving the rocket-propelled car with fires in the back. Uh, that means that there is no company or there is no sort of like commercial version and there's no paid time. And the reason I bring this up is not because I want you to feel sorry for me, it's actually because I want you to understand, don't be angry. Because a lot of times people, they come to me and they ask something and I say, yeah, sure, I'll look into that tomorrow. And then my girlfriend comes along and I do something completely different tomorrow and I completely forget about them. And that's really a problem and I always feel bad about it. So, so please don't be angry if I ignore you or, or or didn't answer you. It's not because I hate you. It's because I, I accidentally had some things to actually do. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm gonna buy a new one next year. But we have sponsoring and donations uh, for those of you who actually wanna give me money. Uh, I know there's a Norwegian guy who does that for fun, but that's him. No one else does it, so you don't have to feel bad because you're not giving back to, to me. Uh, but uh, something down here is support. I have had people asking me about it, and for me support is kind of strange because I worked for Oracle before, and support there is essentially you pay a shitload of money for nothing. <laughs> <laughs> and, and if anyone wanna, wanna pay me a shitload of money for nothing, I'm cool with that, you know? <laughs> it's fine. <coughs> but but I, I really, if someone feels that support is something that would add, add, add value, please let me know in what forms, and I'll try to work something out. But for me, I'm not a businessman, so, so I, I don't really understand the concept. But some people want support, and if you do want support, let me know what you want, and I'll see what I can do about it. And this does not equate to me wanting money, actually. Uh, Clickety-clink, yeah. It's, it's actually me wanting feedback, because, as I said, I'm a developer, which means that I don't use the program myself. Uh, so it's really easy for me to sit in my little room and come up with cool stuff that I think is cool, but they, they don't necessarily solve your problem. So if you have a problem, please come to me with it. Um, so that's really the main reason why I have the whole support and sponsors and that kind of stuff is to get real users in, involved in the project. And this works, works at home, by the way. I think someone has some sort of weird transmitter. Uh, anyway. What you can do is, of course, update the wiki. I need to stand here. You can respond in the forums, of course. Uh, you can submit patches, fork me on GitHub. You can report bugs, uh, come with ideas, tell me what you need, of course. And the last three here are, are essentially brain-dead things that you should be doing, but a lot of people are not, which always surprises me. I have several thousand downloads per week, and there is no feature request, essentially which is kind of strange to me because most likely someone out there downloading it might actually use it for something. But alas, not. Uh, then someone asked me yesterday about the new version, so I quickly compiled the highlights from the 041 version. So uh, now we're done with that. 
<coughs> and if, if anyone else wants some details, I could bring out the top five things I think are interesting. The first one being sockets. We now have IPv6 support and SSL support. And when SSL, I say SSL support, I mean true SSL support with, with certificates and that kind of stuff, not the NRPE SSL support. We also ha have support for a lot of protocols, so hopefully whatever you're using, you should be able to use it with NS Client++. And we have something I call real-time checks, which I think is kind of neat, and I will be demonstrating the latter one log files, because there is no event log on Windows, so it's kind of stupid to do that. Um, and of course, the new command line syntax, which I think actually is good, but I'm not like you, so it doesn't mean you think it's good. Um, and Q next slide. Thank you to my sponsors. And I'll just skip this quickly because, if I, yeah, if I could, I would skip it quickly. Uh, then we have the first question because the book I read about making presentations says you had to make a lot of questions so you get your people involved and that kind of thing. So wha what am I looking for? Yes, there was like one guy in the back. Awesome. This is like the worst crowd ever. Uh, yes, of course, it's a picture. And it would have come if the clickety-clickety thing would have worked. This is, by the way, the nice logo which uh, some guy draw for me like five, six years ago. If he's here, awesome. Uh, it has a couple of problems, though. And I always feel like, like it's sort of gnawing me in the side that it says a couple of things which are not really true. And the first thing is, is of course, Windows, right? Uh, because I've already mentioned that it runs on Linux. Uh, so perhaps it's time for a new logo. And if someone feels graphically inclined, you know, awesome. I like the whole like Arrow or Mac Aqua thing with, with so, so that's cool. If you do something for NS Client++, I'll change into that. Um, and while we're at Linux, let's talk about how to build it on Linux, because uh, that's kind of important, right? And it's a bit like this, is what my kid usually plays with, by the way. And, uh, or, well, she doesn't really play with it. She, I bought her like a box full of Duplo, and she takes the Duplo, puts it in her handbag, and walks around with it. <laughs> that's, that's not good. Uh, hopefully, someday she'll start to play with it, though, but, but it might take some more time yet. But essentially, you need to install some stuff. Uh, the list is on the wiki. It's essentially like build essentials, and you need CMake and that kind of stuff. It's no big deal, really. Uh, then you clone the source on GitHub, or you can download the zip file somewhere. Uh, you can create a build folder, and then you run CMake and make. Uh, CMake is not short for color make, but it is colorful. Uh, essentially, it does what configure does in your normal Linux environment. It creates your make files. And make will build it. And it's really that simple. If we compare this to building it on Windows, for instance, then we have another Lego car, which looks a bit like this. <laughs> and let's just say that this, this is not built by my girl at home. Uh, you have to install a lot of programs. Uh, you have to, to download the source, of course. And then this is really what I'm going to talk about because I've created this little nifty Python script which essentially goes out to the internet, downloads all the dependencies, it patches them, and it builds them, and it configures them. So it is almost as simple as on Linux. Before, it used to take me about two to three days to set up a build environment. Now it takes two to three hours because it takes forever to build. Uh, but it's all automated, which is kind of neat. So it's not that difficult to build on Linux or uh, on Windows. But but I mean, I compare this, for instance, to Make. It, it's like yeah, we had to have this long command lines because it's on Windows. It has to be difficult to use. Um, yes. Then we have the logger again, right? And we have another word on it. And this is sort of stretching the concept, but I like the transition, so I'm going with it. Uh, daemon, and. A lot of people, they do their active checks, which means that they have 45 checks coming in every five minutes saying, are you okay? And I think it's kind of weird to do that. I think since you have a program dedicated to checking m your machine, it might actually be better if it told you when it's not working. Uh, for instance, I used to live in Lulia, which is a student town, and that means that at summers, there was just me left because I was living there. Everyone else, they left for home. Uh, and uh, during summer, I had the blinds down because it's it's summer and there's th the evil sun outside. And because it's summer, I had the door open at the balcony because it's warm, right? So uh, a couple of weeks into the summer, someone rings the door and my landlady comes by and asks me if, if I'm dead. And that's, that's really awesome feature because had I been dead, it would have been very, very good because then she could have buried me. 
and stolen my stuff. But I wouldn't really want her coming by every five minutes asking me if I'm dead. So <coughs> if I am dead, I can probably tell her, or well, not if I'm dead, but, but <coughs> if I have some other problem, I can tell her. And another example is, uh, my guess is if you were to break your bone, you would probably call your doctor and say, hey, it hurts like a motherfucker, please help me. Uh, but you don't want him calling you every five minutes asking, have you broken your hand? No, no. Your foot? No. Is the, is the head okay? Yeah, yeah, we're good. Uh, so what I'm sort of aiming for is something, yeah, clickety clickety again, uh, which is usually called passive monitoring for some strange, bizarre reason. I think you might want to call it something else, and I wouldn't really go for which word, but the right way to do monitoring is, is what I'm usually looking for, or perhaps event-based monitoring or something like that. Uh, and that's something I've been trying to do a lot in the, the new version, and as we said, we're going to see the real-time file checker thing later on. Um, then we have Q new slide, yeah. Then we have the log again, and here is the, the really the really sad part because it says secure, and it, it's it's uh, usually through this <laughs> slide up uh, when I do my presentations, and and then I have the the proud it's secure logo in in the corner. Doesn't really feel very good to be honest, um, because I don't know about security, but but the red stuff doesn't sound secure to me. But with 041, I can actually change this slide a bit because for the first time we have some kind of security on everywhere pretty much except for NRDP. That's just me being lazy. So that will be added in the next version. Uh, and what's happened is essentially me standardizing all the protocols on SSL. So you can now have a strong cl client certificate based authentication, that kind of stuff, if you're so inclined. So is it secure? Well, I hope so, but, but you never know. And the, the problem here is, of course, <laughs> if you're using check and RPE, it will not have all the features of, of the client based certificates and that kind of stuff. So you can't really use it for anything unless you're using NS Client Plus Plus on both Linux and Windows, or if someone were to patch uh, check NRP, which is what I'm hoping for. Uh, but at least I can say that my client is supports secure options, even if it's not always secure, perhaps. Uh, so that's that really sucks. We're like way below time. Uh, yeah, well, that's me being too fast, I guess, or skipping things. So uh, now I'm going to start the demo thing. And I'm actually going to start it a bit slowly by doing the PowerPoint slide thing instead. And what we're going to do is, or what I'm going to talk to you about is first a bit about the command line syntax. And essentially, you can use minus minus help pretty much anywhere to get help on what you're doing. That's not too advanced or cool. Uh, the other thing is this, because it might be kind of weird, and I thought I'd try to explain it. The first word on the command line is really what you're working with. Uh, I don't know if you've used it, but git or subversion or some of those commands, but they usually have the same concept. I mean, if you use git, for instance, the next word will be clone or push or something like that, which tells the git command what you're actually wanting to do. And the reason why you do it that, that way is otherwise you get a lot of clashing command line options. So this way you can sort of box them in a bit. Uh, so the first word is uh, the context or the alias or the sort of the con thing you're working with. Uh, then you have options and then you have minus minus and then you have more options. And this can be a bit confusing. But the reason is that, the, as I said before, NS Client++ plus plus is modular. So the first options are for NS Client++, plus plus, whereas the other options are for the module which you are working with currently. So it isn't that confusing, but it, well, I hope it's not, but it might look confusing. But I will see the difference later on if the clickety clickety thing is working. Uh, these are the contexts which you can work with. Help will just give you the help screen, so that's not too fun. Uh, client will act as a client, and by client you can think check NRPE or something like that, send an SCA, or it's essentially a way to, to use NS client as a client and not as a server answering requests. Uh, then we have service, which is completely useless, unless you're on Windows, where it's, it's almost useless. It will install the Windows service, which is done by the installer anyway, so yeah, it's legacy reasons, I guess. Uh, settings is a lot more interesting though, and that's essentially how you can work with your settings store. And you can do a lot of stuff with that, which I'm gonna demo in a bit. And I think it 
if people were to use it, it would save them a lot of time, uh, or at least me time, because they wouldn't misspell all the options and ask me why it's not working. Uh, then we have test, which is something I've always pushed for and uh, a lot of people ignore. It's actually a way to run Enzyme++ on the command line and see what happens instead of just getting some weird NRP error in your Nagios configuration, which doesn't tell you anything. And then we have unit, which is something I use personally, so I don't use that option. If you do, I'll come and hit you or something. Uh, then we have something called aliases, and uh, because the modules need a couple of options to sort of load themselves and that kind of stuff, I've created some sort of hard-coded aliases for that to become simpler. And Lua Python will, of course, run your Lua Python scripts. Then we have uh, NRP NSJ for submitting or, or checking things remotely. Uh, we have sysvmy and event log, and those are essentially just front ends to your performance counters, for instance, or your VMI data store or, or uh, your event log. Uh, the sys thing is really nice, actually, if you're having problems with your counters, because it will tell you what's wrong. And, and with 041, I've actually fixed a lot of things which I broke in 040, so hopefully you won't have problems with it. But uh, hopefully is the keyword here. Uh, event log is something which I also recommend people to use. What you can do there is you can actually insert a message into the event log. And that might seem like a goofy or bizarre idea, but if you're doing a monitoring solution, you might actually want to test that it's working. Uh, and it's kind of difficult to get your RAID controller to tell your event log that, oh, I'm broken. Well, you can probably go and bang it with a hammer or something, but that might be an expensive way to do it. This way you can actually send the message yourself to the event log to tell it that it's broken, and then you can see that your monitoring is actually working. Yeah. Oh, yeah, actually it worked. Awesome. So, settings. You can do a lot of stuff with settings, but the most interesting ones are, first of all, you can add missing and generate, what that will do is it will add in all the keys you haven't in your configuration file with their description and their default value. Uh, so this is a really nice way to figure out what, what you can configure because it will create a config file which is like six, 700 lines long if you bring everything in. So there you have most of the stuff you can configure. There are a couple of snags which I won't really go into, but, but it, it works kind of kind of okay. Uh, then we have activate module, which is essentially a way to load a module and its configurations. Uh, so that's a good way if you want to bring in a new model and have no idea what it's doing, you can get all the configuration options for it. Uh, and then we have the opposite of add missing or add defaults, which is what I generally use, which is remove defaults. And what that will do is it will take your configuration file, check all the values against the default value, and if they're the same, it will remove it. So this is a good way to clean out your configuration file if you've added a lot of crap which you haven't really configured. Um, this I also added because of all the misspellings people were having problems with. Uh, this will go, oh sorry, yeah, I'm gonna screen it away. This, the last command, will go through your configuration and list all keys which no one wants. So essentially if you put foo equals bar in there, it will tell you that, what is this? I have no idea. And it might still be valid in some weird, bizarre way, but at least NS Client++ does not know what it is. So you might want to think twice if it's something you think NS Client++ should know about. Uh, the biggest problem here is, of course, the uh, allow, or sorry, allow, what's it called? Allow arguments option, which I, with a flash of brilliance, renamed in 040, and no one's figured that out. So they used the old name and nothing works. Uh, but that's me getting a stroke lucky, and yeah. Uh, then we have the client mode, which looks a bit like this, and as you can see, the red stuff is really the only difference between using check NRP on Linux or something like that. And in 042, I have sort of plans to do a client one, so you won't even have to bother about the NRP minus minus. Uh, so you can use, if you want to have certificate-based authentication, for instance, NS client on both ends, and use NRP as your transport medium. Now I'm actually, oh sorry, wait, this is the next slide, yeah, sorry. Yeah. Now I'm actually gonna embarrass myself a bit by demoing things. Yeah, now you get to see all my notes. That's for free. <coughs> is it black? Yeah, oh, yeah. Now we get to see my password as well, that's awesome. Uh, so the first thing we're gonna do is remove the configuration file. Yeah, no, 
you know, if we need to do this, we have a bunch of stuff here. Anyway, uh, then we're gonna use the first command, which is, sorry, uh, what is the first command? Yeah, help, sorry. Well, technically you can see actually, not very well though. Um, <coughs> I can, can try to lift the computer a bit. <coughs> uh, let's do this then, and it will be a bit higher up, but you'll get less information on the screen. I actually used stretch mode because I figured it would it would be readable, but alas, I was wrong. Uh, as I said, this will give you information about what the options do and what you can do with them and that kind of thing. Uh, then we can activate module NRPE. Well, yeah, this is why I shouldn't do demo. Uh, uh, defaults. And what we have now is a configuration file, hopefully, with a lot of stuff in it. So this is what you get when it creates the configuration for you. And as you can see, you have all the descriptions. Or well, you can see, I can see, and, and uh, you'll have to pretend you can see it. You have all the descriptions <coughs> in here, and uh, you can just change the values. So let's go with port, yeah, that was, which we have here. And let's change that to seven. And then we will use the other command. Well, let's be a little fancy. Uh -huh. I can't be fancy, apparently. <laughs> then, uh, rate. Is it correctly spelled? <laughs> oh, actually, you're right. <laughs> Generate, that's better, right? Uh, remove the faults. And what we should have now is a shorter configuration file. Because now it, uh, the log thing is, is a bug, so don't, don't pretend you didn't see that. Uh, it will be fixed. But what you have now is, is just the module and the ports. So it removed everything else because it knows that the values are the default ones. Uh, so if you use this, you can sort of easily, I hope, configure stuff. Um, there is no guarantee that it will actually work for you, but hey, it's, it's free software, so uh, it might work. Uh, NSCP, sorry. And just to show you, here you have the help screen for the NSCP command, and if I add, for instance, NRPE here, I will get the command or the help screen for the NRPE, but if you look at these, none of them are related to NRPE, there's stuff, weird stuff like query, submit, and module, and that kind of thing. Uh, and if we instead add the minus minus, we will all of a sudden get things which are related to SSL and bu buffer length and that kind of stuff. So that's really the difference uh, between them when you add the minus minus before the help option, because all of a sudden the help is for the module you're using and not NS Client Plus Plus the program. <coughs> oh, interesting. How do I get back? Like this. And, oh, yeah, this could have worked if I, oh, yeah, sorry, demo. <laughs> I should have known better. Uh, there. <laughs> what? <laughs> that was weird. Ah, yeah, there we have it. <coughs> uh, this, by the way, is Volvo demonstrating their brand new braking system by ramming a truck at full speed. <laughs> uh, that's usually how demos go. Uh, hopefully this will go a bit better. Uh, what we're going to do here is... Oh, that was interesting. <laughs> You can sort of see the shaded stuff underneath. Yeah, that's PowerPoint for you. Uh, what we're going to do here is we're going to demonstrate the uh, check log file module and what it can do. And we'll do that by using a simple file writer to sort of write the notifications. We'll use the NSCA client to submit the notifications to a com core server. And we will check a text file for updates. Uh, it will look a bit like this. We have the text file here, which we will be checking. Once we find any interesting changes, we will send them off to the file, which will oh, yeah, end up as a file, and we will send them off to our NSCA server, which incidentally is my local machine as well, so it's not end up in another file. That's really the only difference. Um, and now I'm going to see if this works out. Uh, yeah, I can't do that. God, what was I thinking? Mirror. 
Uh, and for those of you who can't read now, I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, it's it's going to be this way. How are we doing on time? It's like 15 minutes left. And that's 15 minutes plus questions or minus questions? So it's, it's, it's over now then, technically. <laughs> <coughs> Could someone just tell me when it ends? We started 15 minutes 2, right? So it should end 15 minutes 2. 11, yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm confused. 11.45, awesome. Then we have time to demo. Uh, so what I'm going to do again is remove the configuration file. <coughs> then I'm going to move my notes around so I have any idea what I'm going to do actually. Sorry. Uh, check log file. Oh, yeah, sorry. Thank you. I should have brought candy so I could have given you, given you some. Uh, yeah, so what do we have now? Oh, there's a weird backslash n somewhere. No idea what that is. Let's pretend it's not there. <coughs> now we get, again, a lot of options which we can set. And uh, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to enable real-time checking. No, oh, this is not X, there is X. And then we're going to demonstrate one of the quirks with the generation thing. Because you can obviously monitor more than one file, you have to create a section for the files. And the sections are never created default. <laughs> so what you get is just the where the sections go. So here we have to add the section manually, which kind of sucks, but it might be fixed in some other version. And then we need to add something in here for it to actually understand that this section exists, otherwise it'll just ignore it. So we'll add in the file, and then we'll go with the... Oh, we don't have that one, actually. And then we'll go back to our configuration file, and now hopefully we will have some stuff we can put here. So now we get the keys for our section. And the third thing we're going to do is we're going to add a filter. And what the... Oh, oh, ah, A, B, I. So what the filter is, is filtering the lines we are interested in. In our case, we want the first column to, to be... Oh, wait. To be like, hello. Because that's what I tested. So we're not going to try any other word. Uh, and then we have something called critical, and that is if the line contains this, it will be or if the filter on this line matches, it will be considered a critical line. So what we'll say here is if column two is crit, or contains crit, actually, um, then we're also going to set a warning filter, which is will be the same. Column two, like, warn. Now let's see if this is correct. Hopefully. Uh, the other thing we're going to do is we're going to set a destination, which, interestingly enough, probably should have been here. Uh, apparently not, though. File. Uh, what this does is tells us where to send this notification. And we'll later on, file in this case will be the file module, which we don't have yet. So we'll need to load that in as well. And we do that with the nice activate modules command. And it's called Simple File Writer. And this time, I'm not actually uh, loading in the default because I don't want to configure this module. I just want to enable it. Uh, so the configuration file now, the only difference is that we now contains the Simple File Writer module as well. And is there anything else in this which I need to do? Mm, no? Awesome. Let's try if it works. And then we use the all wonderful test command, right? Uh, what we're going to do down here is we're going to do tail on the file. And what we're going to do here is we're going to do some echo to the file. And I've prepared this because otherwise I'll just screw it up. So what we can see is when we echo something to the file, it gets into the other file. Awesome, right? It's, it's magic. We've, we've now spent four weeks developing something we could have done in a shell script. Uh, 
the reason though why I spent four weeks developing this, actually I just spent the one week, but, but let's pretend it was four weeks, uh, is that first of all, this now runs on Windows and Linux and potentially at some point in time your other weird Unixes, which I haven't tried it on yet. So you have a standard command everywhere. The other thing is that this does not actually go out and pull the files or anything like that. What it does, it subscribes to file system changes. So it's very, very efficient in that regard. Uh, if you the file contains a million lines, you don't need to open it and read it every five minutes or every five seconds or everything, anything. It just, whenever it's changed, it gets kernel event, it connect or, or subscribe to the kernel event, and it does something. In our case, we write something to a file. Uh, the other interesting thing is if we want to bring in something like NSCA, for instance, in the mix, sorry, uh, client, or is it server? I can never remember. Good thing I have the slide. Yeah, client. Here I actually want to bring in some default values because we need to configure our NSCA server. Uh, let's go with this. So what we have here is we have a default target. Usually you only use the default target. The only reason when you don't want to use the default target is if you have five NSCA servers or something like that. Don't know if anyone has that, but it's totally cool if you do. Then you will need to define multiple targets and sort of tell them which target to use. In our case, we will use the local host. And here, of course, we can put in the SSL options if we want to use SSL, but we don't because NSA has their own weird encryption thing. <coughs> so we're going to go with XR here because I'm scared of AES. I won't tell you why, but it works ish. Uh, and then we're going to set the password, which is secret. And as you can see here, we're not using SSL, so all the SSL options are not, doesn't really matter. Where it's set this to true, then we would have been able to use the SSL options instead. But they're there if you want to use SSL. Uh, and now we're going to run the test command again, and we're going to tail my Nagios command log. And hopefully, if God is with me, it will end up there. No. Awesome. <laughs> oh, yeah, sorry, sorry, I know why. We're not sending anything to NSA. Uh, yeah, demo, demo. Here is where we are sending the notification, right? And we're sending it to the file. So if we want it to NSA, we need to send it to NSA as well. So we need to update that. And hold, hold my thumb. Awesome. It seems to work right. So essentially, we had, what, four changes? changes in the configuration, we now are sending to NSCA as well. And if you were to start doing other servers or protocols or something like that, it's very easy because they're all the same. So it's, it's quite easy to change once you set this up if you want to change your transport mechanism or do something other weird and strange. And just to prove that it works, if we have a crit at the end of those who you can't read it, it says crit there, it will instead send a two up here for those who can see it there and critical down here in the text file. So it seems to actually be working. Sweet. Uh, yeah, this didn't work last time either, so I don't know why I'm trying it again. Uh, let's do this and let's do that. And let's see if we have PowerPoint somewhere. And let's see if PowerPoint misbehaves this time again. Uh, well, weird. Apparently it does. Oh, there is PowerPoint for me. <laughs> I have no idea what that is. <laughs> awesome. Um, yeah, PowerPoint. Now we started on the wrong slide. Um, well, it's time to move on, and what we're going to move on to is, of course, uh, another demo, because I like to embarrass myself in front of 100 people, or well, probably more like 50, but let's not go there. Uh, so what we're going to do this time is not that dissimilar. We're going to add NRPE in the mix, and as you can already read, if you have the shady glasses on or, or drank too much beer last night, then this might probably make sense, is that we're going to use the check log file again, and this time we're going to use something called simple cache, which I will get into details about in a bit, and we're going to use NRPE client. Simple cache is a simple caching module. Uh, by the way, the reason they're all called simple is because I plan to at some time do a not simple cache module, which has some better options. 
but I want to get some sort of feedback on what options are actually useful before I do that. So that's why it's called simple. And what simple cache will do is it will store the result for us so we can check it via NRP or something like that. So it is a bit like a cache. It looks like this. We have the same check log file thing. We send it again to the cache this time, and it will just be sitting around there until something comes in from NRP and asks what the result is. So this is a way to get real-time monitoring through NRPE, so you can do your check things on every five minutes or whatever you feel like, but still not bog down your server by having to go through the log file or something like that. Uh, and this really comes from uh, the problem with the wind Windows Event Log Checker, which did the full polling thing every five minutes. And a lot of people who actually have used their computers to apparently get the very, very big log files. And then it takes a lot of CPU to process all the log file entries. So what, we what I first did with uh, you know, for zero with the check, log file or check event log was add real-time checking, which meant that essentially you're not using any CPU. The minute something is submitted to the log, you just match it against the filter, and you can then either store it if you want to use check and RP, or you can just send it off to your NSCA server. So let's see if this goes well or not. We're not so bad on time. So hopefully, if this goes well. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, so let's exit our NS client plus plus. Sorry. Uh, and we're going to activate another module called Sim. Oh, wait, wait, wait. You're not spell checking me. Simple cache. And we don't really want to configure that either because it just works. So. What we can hopefully do now is if we put something in our cache. Oh, wait, sorry. We need to configure something. Same thing I forgot last time. Uh, because we, oh, wait. We need to send it to the cache as well. There we have it. Now, if we have, we can now do check. Oh, wait, interesting characters cache and we say we want to check sample because that's what it's called and we get the same thing we have in the text file or through the NSCA and again we did this this time with two changes in the configuration file so it's quite easy to get this working and while I'm here I would like to demonstrate also something which I've added to the we have the check log file if you want to do this by checking the log file without subscribing to it but the interesting thing about the check log file command is that if you just run it it will give you description of the options you can use. Uh, so you don't really have to dig up some wiki page or, or, or uh, documentation or something like that because the idea is that with the new commands is that they will be self-documenting. If you run the command without any options, it will tell you what options you can put in there. So trying to make it slightly easier to get things working. Uh, and by that, I'm actually going to stop the whole demo thing, hopefully. Yeah. Let's see if we can figure this out. <laughs> the whole switching screen in Windows isn't really working out, I have to say. It looked like a cool feature on paper, but the implementation leaves a bit to be desired, to be honest. Uh, like this, for instance. <coughs> so, uh, yeah, and why do we always end up one slide back? Oh, no, sorry, it's the beginning of the slide we were at. Yeah, that's true. So with that, I actually, one minute ahead of time, that's, that's awesome. Leave you to questions. Anyone? And, and I obviously did not hear me. Now there's questions. <laughs> yes. Do, do you want to run with the microphone or, or just, yeah? So, so spread out the question pattern now, so you get to run a lot. Hello, good morning. Yes, good morning. Uh, can you uh, check also fact, uh, log files when they are rotating? Yes. What it will do is, if the file size is less than before, it will assume it's a new log file and start it again from scratch. Okay, thank but you. But it's not, I mean, if you're sort of half rotating or something like that, no. But as long as you truncate the file, it's fine. Yes, that corner now. No, there were no questions there. I was just asking for a question over there. So, uh, sorry. <coughs> 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 but, but feel free to run around if you want. Uh, 
questions. Uh, that's that's uh, the part when you ask me things. Really? Uh, it's like worse than last year. Uh, and there weren't many questions then. I can tell you that I'll put the slides on my uh, web page there. And my slides will actually be readable because NetWays will get these slides which has big images over everything. And when they convert them to PDF, it will just be rubbish. Uh, but that's their problem, not my problem. I'll try to mail them the updated slides when I have done them. It will probably take me a day or two. Uh, but that's the drawback to doing slides like this is they're, they're not very useful. Uh, of course, you can find my blog there. I've actually started to blog a bit about how to use NS Client++ and other monitoring related things. So you might want to check it out. I'm on LinkedIn. Uh, you have my email address and yeah, whatever. Uh, oh yeah, I should mention this. We have a Facebook page. I mentioned it last year as well with, with like 200 fans. I think it's like 203. So, so um, I'm, I'm aiming for 300 now. So you know what you have to do when you get out of here? Just go like me on Facebook or my project. You don't have to like me. Uh, that's no, optional. So, still no questions? Oh, 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 sorry. Yeah, you have to stand up and wave or something because I've completely missed you. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm shifting focus now. There'll be no new Windows. No, that, that's the idea. It works on Windows and Linux. And that's the, with in 042, I will rewrite a lot of the checks which are pre-existing. So it means that when 042 comes out, you will be able to do check CPU the same way on Linux and on Windows. And you'll be able to do check MAM, check disk, check whatever, the same way on Linux and Windows. So the idea is to make everything work on both platforms henceforth. Yes. Okay. And you can add the scripts in Lua and Python internally and externally in pretty much any language. And they work on both Linux and Windows. And you can, of course, write DLLs in whatever language you want and compile them, but that's usually a bit more work. So, take your chance. Um, well, if you don't want to... Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, no, you need to install Python because Python is Python. Th that's the upside to doing Lua script, because then the runtime is bundled, so you need nothing else. But Python requires infrastructure. But you just need to install Python, and it will take care of everything from there. And are there some working scripts? 2.7, yes. I think it should work on 2. Point something, but I'm not 100% sure there. You want me to smile? Um, so, so shall I do the same then? And then you're leaving. That's just mean. <laughs> 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 Thank you. Uh, shall we do this slightly more funny by you standing up or waving or something? <laughs> yeah. that, that's not even close to funny. Yeah, <laughs> could, could we get some knives in here maybe? Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, now I broke my camera anyway. Uh, so, so shall we do the waving thing then? At least something, yeah? Th there's like three guys in the back. <laughs> Four guys in the front. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, and, and if there are no more questions, I'll probably head on somewhere else. I, I'll probably be in the bar tonight if you're staying for the puppet camp. Uh, because I'm heading home tomorrow, so I have nothing to do. If you have any other questions you don't really want to bring up here in front of everyone and embarrass yourself or something. Uh, I've done that enough for everyone, I think. So, um, last chance? No questions? Well, thank you.